Hey, I figured it out. Yay. I've never joined a live before. This is only my second one. Yeah, TikTok does not make it easy. There's like, it's a little teeny button in the corner and you have to be live and the other person has to be live. And yeah. They make it really, <laughs> I was like, why is this so complicated? It's not, I was trying yeah. not to use the ring light so that the, it wouldn't be in my eyeballs, but in my glasses. Yeah, exactly. I have my ring light above me. So now it does like this weird halo thing sometimes. Right. But with glasses, ring lights are so hard. It is. Because, I'm always like trying to like look down and then I'm like, I know people think I'm yeah. trying to get like some angles or something and I'm not. Yeah, I'm some trying, weird like. Right. I'm trying not to have you <laughs> looking at this ring light um, situation. But um, I want to thank you because like I had just recently posted, I have no um, pony in the show. There's no dog in the show for right. me. I'm not native. I'm not claiming any rights to being native. It's more like I'm somebody who's a disruptor of the system. And I recognize that the system doesn't work for anyone. So on my journey in TikTok and learning, right? I'm like, oh, land back. That's cool, right? Like, let's like that. Just the hashtag alone sounded cool. So I'm like, yeah, you know what? Like, I absolutely agree that this is indigenous lands, right? Like it was taken and stolen from people. So I started like kind of digging down and I'm like, okay, so what does this look like? What does this mean? You know, as a person who's a homeowner and I would totally feel like, yeah, you know, Okay, what does this look like, you know? Um, also, as a person who wants to buy land, like, my eventual goal is to have, like, a huge healing homestead, hosting retreats, like, all of that stuff. I already urban homestead, and I just want a bigger swath of land to do that and share that space. So, um, in my homesteading search, I just want to give you some background so you're not, like, side swiped by what I'm thinking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, like... So in my um, homesteading research, I came across a creator. She's black. She's mixed. I think she inherited like 25 acres or something. Yeah. Uh, and like Louisiana. No, this yeah, one is in Mississippi. Her. There are. Oh, you know, yeah. I, but, okay. I, I screenshotted her um, handle, but I don't really want to bring her into this because like she's right. not making a beef of it. So I'm not really like it's this is not about her. This is more me questioning what I observed during her sharing right um so she's inherited i believe it is mississippi could be louisiana because there are a few that this has happened to great great grandmother was enslaved um the owner is the grandfather to the enslaved who was then freed he helped her purchase the land you know and so this is personal direct lineage of reparations from that family, right? Like that's how I would see that, right? Like if my enslaved, uh, my ancestors that were enslaved, if the owners paid me something, that's my personal reparations from that family, I'm good to go. Thanks, have a nice day. Anywho, in the comments, tons of comments, and I know I'm not trying to say that every native is a monolith. I'm just saying the energy that I'm noticing on many of her posts, you get this that belongs to indigenous people. That belongs to native people. So she disclosed, like, I believe she's half Choctaw. Um, and I was like, okay, cool. So then it kind of goes on, then it gets a little bit more gross, right? Cause it's like, it needs to be a hundred percent native. And I'm like, oh, yeah. that sounds like blood quantum to me. That sounds a little yeah. colonized, you know, like, mm -hmm. Surely the First Nations people did not also, like, adopt this colonized mindset. So anyway, this leads me on, like, you know, my TikTok search. And I found you from my posting of videos explaining, and I'm just trying to unpack it all. Like I said, there's no dog in the show, except for the fact that I'm Black and anti-Blackness is problematic. And... It just feels like every time I turn to a community or want to unite and be in unity, that community is unsafe. And I already was like low key weary about natives because of the ownership of enslaved people until you explained how that process was more about protection over um, actual ownership in the same way that white colonizers did. So there goes my background, jump on in. <laughs> Yeah, so 
you know, like any movement to land back means different things to different people. Mm -hmm. Um, In essence, as I understand it, because I've seen it, you know, develop. um, Let me turn this sound off. People pinging me. Um, So in essence, as I understand it, it's more about stewardship of the land. No, we shouldn't actually be asking, especially black folks, for their land, for their physical land, what it is, is exactly what you want to build. It's going back to caring for the land. And yes, also giving back our treaty land, like what's happening with the pipeline right now. They're building a pipeline through treaty land. They absolutely legally should not be able to do that. Give us our land back. We have treaties and you are breaking treaties and that has happened throughout our whole history we um as a people welcomed settlers onto this land and said okay live over here you know you yeah you can't live in our village because we're a village people especially i'm from plains native tribes okay and literally how we would put our teepees were in circles You know, we would (laughs) develop our land in a real, like, like African villages were known, like in circles to protect everybody. So we were like, sure, Jeffro, you can, you know, up the mountain, go build your little cottage and, you know, just leave us alone pretty much was what it was. Like, we'll even come and help you to grow corn and help you to know what to hunt and when to hunt. Like we were a very... That's why the Thanksgiving you to grow corn and help you to know what to hunt and when to hunt. Like we were a very, that's why the Thanksgiving, not true, not true. But in essence, it is kind of how we lived as a people. Like if you're starving, we're not going to let you starve. I mean, yeah, um, if like you don't know how to hunt and feed yourself. Yeah, human we're not going to let. Yeah. And they took advantage of that and said, well, no, we don't want just this land over here. We want the land you're living on, too. So we're just going to come kill you. Like, they didn't even try slavery with us. They just went, we're just going to come kill you. Right. Or we're going to violently push you off your land, a.k.a. the Trail of Tears and everything like that. Now, I know the creator you're talking about, and I love her story. So also for my background, my mother is Afro-Native. She is West African. Like, we know exactly where she's not... um, my family was not fortunately really a, a victim of cattle slavery. Um, we haven't been able to find that. My, my I want to just correct you. Gyna- it's uh-huh. chattel with a C. Chattel, sorry. It's yeah, okay. Chattel slavery. Um, we were able to mostly stay in Ghana and we came to this country. Oh, okay. Uh, we did come to this country because of violence. We were escaping violence. Right. Um, literally, that's why I haven't really been able to go back and visit too often wow. is my family oh, who still lives over there is afraid that my skin tone will make me a victim of trafficking. Right. Because tourists are often because, you know, my skin tone denotes that I probably have some money. They don't know. They just see me as a privileged person. And I understand my privilege of that that there probably is the money to be had by kidnapping me. And I'm 4'11", I'm very small and everything else. I would be a victim of trafficking if I went over there. Um, So I've gone back there like five or six times, but it's not a constant thing because of my safety. Um, So my family did come over here because of safety issues, but not because of slavery. Um, So I do have, I am the child of an Afro-Native woman. and so I can very much you. Mm-hmm. So because like I think that also I'm not getting some answers because maybe I don't have the proper oh. language, right? So like because I'm like indigenous, like there's black indigenous people, right? Like because you to me, I would say you were yeah. Afro indigenous, right? But yeah. am I using the terminology wrong then? Like because another like the second part of that is which we'll hopefully we'll get to is, is like, can you also, can you not also be black and indigenous or black and native? Because I'm seeing a lot of like pushback against that too. Like, no, black people aren't native, black people aren't indigenous. And I'm like, 
Well, certainly, like, even with the whole, like, you said, like, those five civilized tribes that owned, um, you know, people. That in, I don't want to say enslaved people because you're saying that it was a system of protection versus enslavement. So, but we could say that, you know, integrated with enslaved people, wouldn't the descendants of those people then be native or would they be indigenous? What language am I using wrong? Because maybe that's why I'm not getting, you know, because I tag native TikTok and like, I'm really trying to make sure that, um, and you can Google, but so much, like certain questions do have right. to be ask of the community right because like google even google scholar sometimes is like and because i try to use google scholar as much as possible like that's how i learned about i'm like well why couldn't black people actually be indigenous and i learned about like the ice age and the mitochondrial dna and google scholar was helpful in those aspects but not in the language usage of indigenous and or native so if you could yeah, so that's, I, I work with language for a living. Um, I work in content. I'm a writer. Okay. So I work a lot with language. And that's why when we had our text, I was like, oh, there's a lot to text. But yeah, so there's indigenous. Indigeneity, it just means you're indigenous to the land that you're in or the land that you came from. Okay. Scottish people, like if your family's been in Scotland for a thousand years, you're indigenous to Scotland. The Sami people that we hear about a lot are indigenous to their land. The Vikings came in and conquered them. They were indigenous. So indigeneity really just encompasses that you're indigenous to the land that you live on or your indigenous roots to a land. So my mom would be indigenous to Ghana, to Lagan, actually. We're from Accra. Um, in Lagan, we're indigenous to that land. But then my grandfather, who is the African um, patriarch of our family, married a Blackfoot woman from the United States. Therefore, my mom is Afro-Native. She is directly African okay. from an African man and married a Native woman. She was enrolled in the Blackfoot tribe, everything. So she's Afro-Native. She's also indigenous because she's indigenous to this land and she's also indigenous she was born in west africa so she's indigenous to west africa as well so that's where language comes into play okay. um you know not to speak for everybody but as a black person you're you're black and are you indigenous to this land that depends on who you talk to to me you are brought over here like if you're a descendant of chattel, chattel slave, sorry, I'm not great about that okay. word. I, um, I have a slight speech in, in, in speech impediment. Yeah, I can't say the indigenous. Yeah. So one, if though, you no came way. over here by force, that is not your fault, your family's fault. That's not your heritage. You have come here. You've helped develop a great nation, not because you wanted to, but you, you know, you are a part of building this nation. And like, especially that creator story we were talking about, um, her reparations were land and that land is hers and should be honored as hers. And she is caring for that land. She is doing land back. Yeah. She's keeping that land and developing it, not like destroying it. So she is actually doing exactly, I've watched her videos, it's beautiful. So She's beautiful. redoing her family's house it's so amazing. she can live in it. It's such a great she wants to bring other people onto that land. So she's creating community. Like everything she's doing is beautiful. And I went back and looked at her comments too. And that is, the things I'm saying, that I've seen said are absolutely not okay. They are very anti-Black and it's very saddening as a native person my father is also half native um his grandmother was pre and uh married a sicilian man hence that's how i got my light skin i'm biracial um so i have native on both sides and i honor that native heritage daily and how i live walk and uh use this land and um Land back is about trees. It's and it's also about land defending and water defending, like you see with pipeline three. It's not we want to come and kick you out of your house and make you homeless and 
go back to the country you came from because right. this is ours. That's militancy. That gets into weird, like, you know, weird things. And yeah, yeah that, blood that quantum. Vibe, no, I blood quantum is not, is not okay. Like, blood quantum was a colonizer system to destroy our people. It was to say, because what happens, and a lot of people don't realize this, Eventually, is that's a quick... No- Native yeah, people. that's a very right. quick way to destroy the native community. Super, super fast. Because, yeah, so we have over 900 tribes in the United States. Most people don't realize that because they see the 400 and something federal tribes. Well, that just means those are tribes that have been able to keep their federal recognition. There's another over 400 tribes that the government has literally come in and said, because of blood quantum, since you don't have enough full-blooded, half-blooded, quarter-blooded people in your tribe anymore, we're going to unenroll you. We're going to disenroll you, and we're going to take your land. That's that was, where land back comes into when play. When I learned about blood quantum, I don't. I I used to live in North Dakota. Please stop. I'm actually live right now. Do you need something? I'm sorry, my son is here and he's five. That's okay. So what do you need? <laughs> When they get stale, uh-huh. and then will they, they just smush in? Uh-huh. Yeah, because they'll be rotten, buddy. Oops. Thanks. I'm, I'm, that was obviously so important. <laughs> He's five. Right. Everything in the world is right. important. It is super right. important for him. And um, I will, yeah. uh, Alaya, uh, I will put, I will tag the creator's page like somewhere. I don't know because it wasn't about her. I don't want people like to because she's right. not making a big deal about it. It was just something that I it's just her. an example. But her story is yeah. absolutely beautiful. So I totally understand wanting to follow it because the journey is gorgeous. But when I had learned, so I lived in North Dakota in I don't know two thousand something and what have you, and that Sioux land out there, right? And so yeah. we would go on to the reservation, invited, right, and learn about. Um, you know, the culture there, the sad and the other thing. And so, and there's a really large native popular pop, um, population there. And there's a lot of interaction with the military base and the people on the res. Um, so awesome. I definitely will. I'm going to look, I screenshotted it before. If I cannot figure out how to find that during this live, I leave my inbox open. So just like inbox me and I will share her, um, her tag because it's really amazing but um it's something like creole zero or something but um i will i'll definitely share it so that being said when i learned of blood quantum like it took me all of like 10 minutes to be like wouldn't you get be done with like wouldn't you be wiped out like unless you're really legit in breeding within your tribal like because there's no way like every like So that, so the inbreeding part comes up. So let me explain that to you. So you'll hear, so like, I'm Blackfoot, but I'm Picana, Picani, which means that, so Blackfoot is my nation, Picani is my tribe, and I'm of the Fox clan. So I have three identities within that one tribe. Mm -hmm. How we don't interbreed is like, I will never marry a fox clan person okay. i will marry another clan also we had inter agreements between tribes so um that's why you get a lot of people like me who are this and this we're okay. of two tribes okay people also married between like land agreements so tribes coming together to survive right small tribes will marry into a bigger tribe you keep still get to keep your tribal identity but then you become part of a larger tribe that's how the cherokee nation became very huge the blackfoot nation the navajo nation we take in and and marry agreements between chiefs and things like that so that's how we keep our native identity and growth but we don't inbreed like i'm not gonna marry somebody in the fox clan in the blackfoot nation because there's too high a likely that we are somehow related, related okay because i was some like, way I, I yeah was, i was like that's terrible because it wasn't and it wasn't a judgment on inbreeding i mean like to be honest right. the world did that for like until like 
not too long ago. It's very interesting how <laughs> our values shift and we forget history. So it wasn't even a value placement or a judgment on that. I was more my like, damn, that's like really messed up to force. Cause that's what it is. It's like, for, well, I didn't know how it worked, but in my mind at that time, yeah. I was like, you're literally forcing spaces of such. Right. And because after a while you just start breeding out, like if you out marry or what have you, and like blood quantum is just gross to me. And it's like only natives and horses have to do well, it. It's, yeah, yeah, it's, it's destructive. It's destructive. But I mean, if you think about it, like in, in, during slavery, bl blood quantum was oh, in, yeah slavery rules too After the rooms, one drop rule one drop blood, it's all the blood that, right? yeah yeah the race laws like i try to tell people yeah. I'm like everything that happened in germany was happening here like they learned it from yeah. here hitler came here yeah and even hitler was like he literally <laughs> learned it from native from how the government set up native tribes and laws correct and then when race laws came into play like hitler would actually visit here and took our race laws and nose measurements and all of yeah. that and like i'm like yeah we totally created hitler like please put all of the pieces together but i digress but it does lead into <laughs> um that you know like I said, like with the anti-blackness. So like someone like yourself, like I get it and I get all the interconnections. And like I said, I am not native, nor am I making any native claim. Super duper happy right. to be regular, regular, black American and Irish American <laughs> mix. Like I'm fine with that. But what, like I said, what keeps coming up is like that. It's like, and I know that anti-blackness is real and it's something to unpack. So it's like, I want to kind of like put a microscope up, like uh, you may want to take a look at this, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because when I see other people, so like more like, you know, I, I, there's another creator that I follow who's Dominican. And then, like I said, my own background, I grew up in the Bronx and like the Bronx have more Puerto Ricans. Oh, I'm from the South Bronx. <laughs> Me too, Hunts <laughs> Boy, what part? I'm from Park Chester. Oh my God! My like aunt Morris lives in Park, Park Chester. I know exactly what. Okay, that is. we're yeah. gonna talk about that later. I love that. <laughs> so, like, there's more Puerto Ricans in the Bronx, yep, per capita than there are in Puerto Rico, right? Yeah. So when I'm sitting down and I'm following this other creator who's, you know, Dominican, but I, I always knew Puerto Ricans were Tainos. Like, you know, I knew what right. their makeup was like: Spaniards, you know, the European Spaniards, Africans, and Tainos. Like. That is just normal knowledge if you are within the Puerto Rican community. Like, they've right. always known that. If you didn't know that, I I, I would be actually shocked, right? So, I'm like, <laughs> okay, cool, got it. They are Taino Indians. And I'm saying Indians. I know it's not Indians anymore, but right. I'm saying it from the knowledge that I had within that point in time, right? So, got it. Puerto Ricans are Taino Indians, fine. No one's taking that away from them, right? But then as you kind of learn and we're fast forwarding now and I'm learning more about First Nations and tribes and all of this, I'm like, okay, well, so many of the Tainos were wiped out, right? And so yeah. Puerto Ricans are not saying that they're not Taino, but what I'm saying is it's more than likely and not also trying to do the blood quantum, but more than likely culturally, uh, well, ethnically, I guess, is they would be more ethnically African. In my opinion, I'm not a fucking biologist. I'm not doing DNA right. test results or anything. But I'm just thinking of considering how the Spaniards came through and like wiped out natives. I'm going to just say that they were doing the same thing even in the islands. So ethnically being more African and culturally, right? Because people are like, you know, they're very much still culturally African, their dance, bomba music, uh, their foods, yep. like their, their culture is so, so rich. Like I really appreciate Puerto Rican culture and um, the music, you know, like the, the beats, the bongos, the drums, all of that is very much, and not, I don't know native, native culture. So it could also be very influenced by Taino culture. I'm not negating that. I'm just speaking on what I'm aware of. So that being said, I'm like, okay, so it's super duper okay. Like I see a lot of these Puerto Ricans and Dominicans on here who are like your complexion, my complexion, who are like, you know, no, we're Taino, Taino TikTok, Taino this, Taino native TikTok. Yeah. And everybody's like, Wepa! like it's all good. 
Yes. Then I'll see a black creator who is like, you know, hey, we're also, you know, native or Afro indigenous or, you know, I'm Creole, I'm Cree, I'm Choctaw. I'm like, because I'm thinking about the yeah. South, right? Um, and I'm like, but when they're a little bit darker and it doesn't fit that narrative of like what it may look like or what's so acceptable, they're like, no, you're not. Like black people. Yeah, are and I, that black people aren't in drives and I'm me like, nuts. But the Puerto Ricans are like, I, like make it make sense to yeah. me. Isn't it the same for us here in America, right? Because the Puerto Ricans in Puerto Rico are also from the African diaspora. It's just a different stop on the boat. Yep. So we share ancestors and the way they split up families for all we know, you know, literally different family members of the same tribe that were wherever, you know, let's say they came from Ghana, literally could be spread throughout the diaspora. Like we drop mom off in DR, we drop grandpa off yeah. in PR, we drop, you know, so-and-so in Savannah and we drop the other one somewhere else. So like considering that there's that, common ancestry and lineage throughout the diaspora. I'm just trying to unpack where the hell is this? Like, can we talk about the fact that it is actually anti-Black to say, like, it's not possible for Black Americans to also have, and I'm going to say Native identity, since it would not be Indigenous, according to how you explained Indig... Can't say that word. Indigeneity. 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 <laughs> <laughs> um yeah it's it is a lot to unpack and it's a lot and it comes from colonization literally like the fact that a lot of people were brought it's just racism really it's just a lot of racism i mean you see it in every community from white to hispanic to it's just a lot of anti-black and i've honestly never understood it i don't i don't understand I just don't understand racism because I'm too logical. It makes no sense. Right, yeah. Racism yeah. just doesn't make... And so trying to understand why somebody is racist is just like, I just look at them and go, are you are you dumb? Right. Because it makes no sense. Like, you know, I have Afro-Native relatives who fully look Black every day of the week. I mean, I look other. I go into white spaces and immediately white people are like, what are you? Oh, yeah. And then my name, Nani Shanae, you know, yeah. they're like, what are you? I was, you know, my, um, I grew up in foster care. A lot of my foster families were Puerto Rican. So like my Puerto Rican friends in Parchester would be like, oh, that's our people. Oh, yeah. Even though I'm not Puerto Rican, they they're like, that's our people. And I yeah. loved it. Like, I she it. cooks Puerto Rican food. She speaks Spanish. She's one of us. She grew up in Puerto Rican households. Right. I grew up in Native households, too. Like, I, need to try I have never gotten, but when in the Native community, when I mention that my mom and I show pictures of my fully black, dark, six foot tall, totally looks African mother, right. they're like, Oh, so you're Afro native because your mom's black and your dad's native. And I'm like, no, my mom is Afro native yeah. and my dad's Sicilian native. Like both of my parents are not are half native. Right. Both of my parents are also mixed with, you know, another. My dad came here from Sicily. Wow. He's not like that's why I say I am the child of two immigrants right. who happened to both of my grandfathers oddly enough, married Native women from my my uh, Native grandmother on my father's side is Cree from Quebec. Mm -hmm. My Native grandmother is Blackfoot from Montana, like straight no up from Montana. She was a farmer, farmer family, all that stuff. So, you know, the racism I don't get and we really need to stop. We really need to focus on solidarity because here's the thing. At the end of the day, white supremacy is trying to wipe us all out. Mm -hmm. That's my White point. supremacy doesn't care if you're black or native. It doesn't care you're if you're the same white. To them. White supremacy is not yeah. even like loyal yeah. to white people. Plug in the right. Community. No. Look at look at how people in the Appalachians are treated. Look at how people yeah. in the white farm lands are treated. Only cares to protect Doesn't rich care. Whiteness. And that, that's like, yeah. that's the only people that it's serving as a system. And even to yeah. them, it's not loyal because it's at the cost and sacrifice of their soul. Oh, yeah. 
So, like, I mean, they will lay off a factory worker in an who's five generations fa- factory worker just because they don't want to give them benefits. Absolutely, they don't care. White supremacy is here to focus on making men mainly white men more rich and keep all the money in families. That's why you have the Rockefellers and you have the, you know, the the um, Kennedys and the Bezos is now creating generational wealth. He's going to pass that down to his kid and he's going to raise his children to keep that money. Yeah. He's not paying his factory workers of any color good wages. No, because they don't. White care supremacy about only cares about money. Yeah. So we need to stop being shitty to each other. You broke up. By the same yeah. system. So That's me attacking a black person who's native because they're not native enough. It doesn't make sense in my head. It's just, I don't understand that. So going we back, all need to fight this together. I agree. And going back to the beginning, so that's where, because like I get like the energy of land back, right? Like I yeah. kind of like more move around in energetic kind of like, oh, right. I get the energy of land back, which like you said, like for me, that is land back, right? Like I want to do a healing homestead. I already urban homestead yeah. here. I'm very community oriented, yada, yada, yada. Like I believe in the power of the people, right? Like we should actually all get together and stop buying these houses because it's weird and just go buy land yeah. and build on it. Um, Cause like, I like even owning a house to me is like, you're still so individualized, right? And it's a part of American individuation that makes people not focus. Cause inside of my house, I still don't know what the hell's going on with my neighbor. How are they? Are they healthy? Yep. Are they sick? Are they eating? That's still not community, right? Like for me. No. Personally. And the fact the government can come and take your house from you if you don't pay them money for taxes. Right. Which is they can kill insane. So we don't really own houses anyway. No. You own, <laughs> because you own we have to pay the government. In a really weird yeah. way. Like you could own lands. I like you have but it's like really difficult anymore yeah you used to be able to own land in america that much in the united states much easier um and you would be able to get like to the core of the earth kind of deed right those are really hard to come by right now because technically in the united states like i own my house but like the reason why we need permits to do things is because you actually only own like six inches of yep. the land that your home sits on. So once you break ground, now you have to pay them. Um, yep. But yeah, anyway, that's a whole other kind of conversation. But <laughs> yeah. Yeah. for me, um, you know, what I'm thinking about is, like I said, like I'm down for the land back energy. Like I'm here for that. I agree with that. Like land is supposed to be shared. It's supposed to be community, you know, and I don't think it should be demanded and forced upon anybody. That should just be something that's a part of you. Right. And like the more of us who live like that, who believe like that should do so by example. Therefore, like people like, holy shit, I want to do this too. Right. Um, Yeah. I think that's why her story is so beautiful. And, you know, I love the ideas and plans that she has with her land. Oh, awesome. I'm Irish, Scottish, Canadian, and I'm seeking direction from our local First Nations leaders on how. That is awesome. And see, that's that's land back. That's really land back. Right. Work with your native tribe well, hold on, wait, and wait, take wait, care wait, of wait, your land. Into that, because now I want to get clarity. Is that? Yeah. But, but, <laughs> but. So, like, I'm down for the energy of that. And if that's just it, then yeah. hey. But then as I started going deeper, right? Like, because, like, eventually there's going to be legislation on it. Right. Like, that's how I, I'm like, I'm aware that eventually it's getting a lot of momentum to go to the next election to get our first nation. Awesome. Um, eventually there will be legislation on that. And I I get concerned because I don't trust the government. <laughs> because right. <laughs> yeah. Right. Why would I? It's wild. But anyway, so I get concerned because I don't trust the government. So then I start wondering, okay, what does land back look like? And if it starts looking like we have to legally turn over titles, land deeds, who do you think they're going to come after first? It's going to be poor people, black people, because it's not like they're going to fucking give up Manhattan. Right. They're not no, like, exactly. Hey, uh, you know, I heard like they're not going to give us back Central Park. Right. Well, I mean, and then <laughs> and see now that's I'm so glad you said that. 
So like you say Central Park and like I, as a black person would argue it should go back to black people because it was Seneca Village. It should. Right? So it's yeah. like, I, and I don't- That's what want... I mean. They're not going to give us back Central Park. Right, like, They're not... Native people didn't live in Manhattan. Black folks did. Black folks developed that land, created their own village, their own tribe, and the white government came in and slaughtered them. Right. And it's like, so and now it's a park. When I see like the, the, the anti-blackness, where I get concerned is because one, again, back to government, because I always attack systems and not people, right? Not I'm not trying to be out right. here like, oh, First Nation people don't give a fuck about black people. I'm trying to get clear on things. Is that I don't trust systems and the government is systems. So as First Nations people are getting more voices, getting more momentum, like, you know, this person said, you know, I'm here in Canada trying to make it work, you know, to empower their voices and we're doing that here and i and i'm here for it i'm here for it but what always happens in the united states is black people get shitted on while everybody else gets elevated and the bar is set on black bodies what's been like you said even the indigenous people were able to escape enslavement because of the enslavement of africans right like so I'm yeah. not saying that, and it's like not an oppression Olympics, right? I'm not saying that what they did, I like oppression is oppression is oppression. But what I'm yeah. saying is, is that Native Americans, you know, First Nations people were literally spared from enslavement, though they were slaughtered, you know, due to the enslavement of Black bodies. And the bar in the United States of America and damn near the world, because at this point, American influence is worldwide has been set on black bodies. So whenever I see momentum and stuff, I'm like, how is this gonna impact, impact black people? Because I don't trust systems, I don't trust the government. They're not giving back Mount Rushmore. Before they do that, the government would, I, I would trust the government to seize our personal property first to turn over to tribes before it ever gave up federal land, ever. Yeah. I fully expect that as crazy or wild as it may sound. But when you start thinking about the fact like they bombed black neighborhoods, it doesn't sound so crazy. You know what I'm saying? Like, just, yeah. So when I think about legislation, is there legislation that I could look up for land back? Like I'm down There's, for the, no, not Yeah. Is there- There's none. And that's the point is- Are we working on legislation so for land back? And what-, what how, We can't, as you've noticed, we can't even get our own community to agree on what land back is. Gotcha. From my view, from being somebody who is involved in the political system mm -hmm. as an activist, I'm focused on give us our natural treaty land back. People aren't really living on our treaty land. Pipelines are living on our treaty right. land. Route, Mount Rushmore is Lakota treaty land. Right. Like, give us that back. I'm not trying to come to your for your home. Right. Now, I'm trying to come for uh, what the Zuckerberg's home in Hawaii because he's literally building it on Hawaiian treaty land. Right. He needs to get the F out of Hawaii. That is not his. That is sacred Hawaiian native treaty land. Understood. That's what land back means to me. And that's why, see, we can't even agree on what land back is. For me, it's give us back the land that you've destroyed right R mount rushmore central park you know give it back to the stewards of that land that are going to care for it and yeah your plantation in louisiana that you throw weddings at that shit needs to be destroyed we need to just or right. give it back it's, to the black folks that wild. built that plantation because it wasn't white folks that built those slave houses no it was black folks absolutely give it back to the descendants of the enslaved that built that land and that's how we get creole people too creole people to me are just as native as i am right because they have native ancestry and they have black ancestry and they built that land they built louisiana they built new orleans 
Yeah, the rich guy so, with the plantation house. Give that back to the descendants oh yeah. that built that house. I think that land. That's back what right land back means to me. I think that from what you're saying, I would be down with land back. You know what I'm saying? Because land back sounds like native reparations, and I'm here for everybody getting the shit that they are owed, pretty much. Like, give me what you owe me because there's a debt to be paid. That's why I believe in reparations. Yeah. Like, I don't even argue with people about reparations for Black people on an emotional level. Like, no. oh, but what about? Look, I don't give a shit what you're talking about. no there's no I'm what about, about it just like, is in the infamous yeah. words of jay-z if you owe me 10 you're not gonna give me nine period yeah you owe a debt pay it i'm done with that like i'm not here to plead to anybody uh on their emotional oh but my ancestors i don't care about that there was a plan in in in, in place and there was an agreement yeah. made and the agreement was broken. You owe the debt. That's the end of the conversation. Run me my money. That's really what land back is. Yeah. It's give us back our treaty land. Right. We had treaties. We left you alone and went off our reservations. That wasn't our picked land, like the Navajo Nation. You know, nobody, that's not historical Navajo land. That's where Navajos were forced to go live. Give us back our actual land. Yeah, the Trail of Tears was just not what, I mean, the Trail of Tears exists, but versions of the Trail of Tears happened throughout the United States gotcha. where Native people were for Seattle, for example. Seattle is literally built on top of treaty land that white people stole. We had treaties and we said, like I said, okay, we're going to live over here and honor our ancestors right. and bury them and fish and hunt and be stewards of this land. You guys live over here and do your your thing, you know, your Bible, you have your religions, yeah. you eat the food you want to eat. We'll even come over and help you grow crops. We'll teach you how to use that soil for native plants to that land. White folks said, no, we want your land and then we're also going to be bring invasive species in to destroy that land and we're going to mine for gold and all this other stuff and then we're going to build a city on top of it and we're going to send you to the worst land in washington and have fun with that gotcha hold on someone said as a and i'm not i don't want to slaughter mm -hmm. as a creole <laughs> person i don't know how to say that word you could Type it out phonetically if you'd like, but I don't like to slaughter people's um, culture. Uh, land back means let us do it our land, which I get. I get yeah. it fully. But then we're like, I, and which I think that, you know, Nani, you're doing good with explaining to me what is going to be considered your land. So where my confusion, and this is why I was like asking, like, again, I wasn't saying I'm not trying to shit start. I'm trying to gain clarity. Right. Um, because like I said, as a black person, anti-blackness is rampant everywhere. And um, when you start see Homa, is that right? Homa Creole. Um, as a black person and like just I, I don't trust. Like I said, like trusting the government, no one should trust the government. But like I just no. <laughs> definitely as a black and grew up poor person, you know what I'm saying? I don't I don't trust the government. Um so when I'm hearing it, right, I'm like, this is gonna impact us in worse than anybody else, right? Because I personally believe the entire of the United States of America is native land. So when I hear, you know, let us steward our land or give us our land back, I'm like, shit, I think I live on, um, I've, I'm in Georgia, I'm in Atlanta, Georgia, and I think that this is Creek, I think it's Creek. I, I, creek, I, I, yeah, I a lot creek. of Georgia Yeah, creek. I think like, cause, um, Yes, this is creepy. I have like one of those maps that's like, hit, like it's from, um, I don't remember the website, but it's a map. It's a really cool map. If you can Google it, it's like, it literally, you like Google whose land am I on? And it's a map that if you type in your address, you'll see the native, the First Nations people that actually were indigenous to it. So I'm on Creek land. So I'm like, well, you know, to be fair, right? Because like blackness and natives start overlapping right because whilst i yeah. am on creek land and i will fully admit that i also am still on a uh, old plantation right like yeah that was given the plantation 
was given back to the government. They turned it into a park and then like a neighborhood to become that. So it's like, there's these intersections and like seeing the anti-blackness is like super harmful. Cause I'm like, yo, I'm down for you. But like your anti-blackness is like, fuck your land now. <laughs> like, 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 that's how like, I mean, feel, I think like, you say it too. And I say it all kinfolk isn't kinfolk. Yeah. I, you know, like to me, Black slaves built Atlanta. I lived in Atlanta for a little while. I lived in Buckhead. I lived in Buckhead. So we, and, I don't know uh, what it was like then. But. Yeah. Um, you know, that was built by slave hands. Georgia uh, was America. conquered and built by, yeah, by slave hands. The United and like States. you said, yeah, exactly. So in solidarity, you know, like I would just say for land back for me would be the open spaces, the parks, the reserves, the environmental uh, set aside land. Let the local, the creek, the creek people, let them oversee that. Let them stewardship that. Now, parcels of land. That's reparations. Give that back to the people who built it, which would be the enslaved. Give that plantation back to the black community. Let them have housing. Yeah. Because yeah, redlining to be is leader. rampant I, too. I need you to write yeah. legislation. Because now that I would be with. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, listen, yeah. I'm not here to deny that it's Greek. I'm not trying to have a false claim to being native. I'm just trying to understand what being black and indigenous and or black and native or Afro-Indigenous, Afro-Native looks like. And like unpacking the anti-blackness <clears throat> and what land back like because i fully agree like you know i don't even want to be responsible for mount rushmore or the water in the country like <laughs> right not my jam um but i would absolutely i fully fully agree with like what used to be plantations definitely needs to be turned over to um you know the and not just like all black people because i have a whole that's a whole other live or whatever because <laughs> Black has now become such a term like white has, like it's taken over anyone who's yeah. melanated. So specifically, I think that, you know, within the black community, we also need to get very clear when it comes to reparations and all uh, like our um, reparations, it needs to be descendants of slavery. Like, Well, that's why when I explain to you like my heritage, right. I'm very clear on the fact that like, if there were reparations in the United States, I would not take that check. Correct. My family was not victims Correct. of slavery. Right. My family, yes, is black and African, but we weren't yeah. enslaved. I think we, that you know, we we went and hid. We know it. We went and hid. Yeah. Yeah. We were able to not become become that. Right. So like I'm not due reparations as a descendant of a black person because that part. I'm not. Right. But I do have a cousin that is right, because, and that's fair. You know, I mean, there's, her there's her ways to like tie us to fifth that. grandparent mm -hmm. was a slave, right? Was a slave in Texas, like, and we know that. And funny enough, she's living on Native Treaty land right now, wow. and she knows that. But like, she is owed some land in Texas because her fifth great grandparent was a slave in Texas. Right. She's owed reparations. I'm owed native reparations. Like my like my tribe was split by a border. I, you know, that stupid border, black feet people were totally separated from each other. I can't go visit my own family in Canada from the same tribe, same clan, because there's a border there. Like, it, I have to have a piece of paper that lets me pass a border right. just to go see my own family. So my reparations would be, stop that. Give us back our treaty land that you destroyed with a border. Right. Yeah, like, I mean, I'm, like, eventually, I would love to just see a borderless world because borders are really about more hoarding of resources and ownership. Yeah. And, like, money, 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 money. Because, like, people should just be able to get up and travel because, but they know that if we were able to get up and travel, we would actually be exposed to different cultures, different ways of life. Mm -hmm. We would recognize how shit certain things are, right? Like, me living outside of the 
this country, like, because I absolutely was like a whole American patriot. Like, this is the best fucking, yeah. best fucking place on earth. <laughs> if you don't love it, leave it kind of person, you know. It's the least worst. That's <laughs> you know, a really good like, way I of think, saying it. It is the least worst. I always worst. say that. I'm like, America isn't wonderful, right. but it's one of the least worst. Right. I, I like <laughs> that. And I totally will steal that. But just to give you like my background on it, I was yeah. absolutely a whole as American nationalist. Like this is the best place on earth. Um, so um, leaving the country, moving somewhere else, living somewhere else, exploring other people's cultures really opened up my eyes to how sheltered we are here. So now I really appreciate the conversation. And when it comes down to legislation, if in fact it is worded in that kind of way, right? Like, cause see, that's what I would like to do. It's like, I would like to see yeah. like ADOS, like, you know, African descendants of slavery come together with first nations people and be like, yo, let's push this together. Like land back. Yeah, land reparations, I would love that. Right. Like you can get your land back we can get the land owed to us, right? And like, and yeah. you can control the water and everything. But you have to remember too, is that like, why I'm appreciating this conversation is because even as I'm always, every day is decolonizing. Every day yeah. you have to be actively decolonizing. Because when I hear somebody say my, t well, yeah, you could go turn over your title to the local truck. I'm like, turn over my fucking turning over my title to my home. You know, like that sounds insane. Like turn over the deed and like, no, why would I do that? Or you, if you buy land, turn over the deed and pay your taxes to the natives. I'm down for that. I'm not turning over my deed because like I have this idea of American and ownership. They're, right? they're honestly, most people don't know this. There is some places where land back is slowly happening. So like yeah. where I live in Phoenix, Arizona, next to me is Scottsdale, the land of the rich. <laughs> and yeah. actually half of Scottsdale is on Pima land. It's on reservation land. The city of Scottsdale pays reparations, taxes to Pima and they pay land rental fees to the Pima nation to build their, there's a mall right now yeah, on I, the I reservation land. It, it and I love that. And if that life. could happen, yeah. that would be beautiful. Like pay the reparations to the people's land that you want to build on. You can still build, you can still build, but you know, right. help the native communities land that you're building on. Absolutely. Don't leave us in shacks on reservations that have no, over half of the, like right now, over half of the, um, uh, blah, 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 blah. the um, Navajo, the Dadai, Denai land, there are people, full ass towns in essence, without electricity or water. They have to drive into town and buy water to bring back to their house. There are generations of children on this land, generations, not five years, not seven years, that have never drank water out of a tap. That's insane. They don't know what that's like because their water is so polluted that they, they generations of people don't know what fresh creek water tastes like fresh water from a well because they have to drive 10, 20, 30, 40 miles to buy water or have water shipped in and you have to boil your water to take a bath. Today in 2021, they don't have electricity to their house because we have forced them onto the shittiest land their ancestors have well, no yeah, connection to. Yeah, that's just I mean, Flint, Michigan still doesn't yeah. have clean water. They don't care about poor exactly. People. So, like, if they can make and it, and, yeah. and they orchestrate what's poor, right? Like reservations, ghettos. Yep. Like they literally orchestrate poverty to ensure because that's the only way capitalism works. Is like it needs yeah. the underclass. Look at Soundview. It yeah. What? Soundview in the Bronx. Have you been lately? I went for my fortieth birthday. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I, I went a few crazy. like. I have friends who live in Soundview, yet two blocks away are three million dollar houses. Yeah, I grew up on Bryant Avenue in Hunts Point, like literally, okay. like hookers on the yeah. point by the Bronx River. Yeah, and have fun getting a pizza and delivered to your house. You can't. Was like the only <laughs> white person in the neighborhood, 
And I went home and I was like, look at this gentrification. Like now they're jogging yeah. and the Bronx really oh, yeah. all cleaned up and there's new parks. And people say, you know, like, why wouldn't you be happy with the, you know, like the way it's, I'm like, because you pushed out all the people that you pushed into it. Yeah. But that's where the problem yeah. with it is like, there's a very fine line of revitalization and gentrification. Like you could have done this anyway. Years ago. Like, yeah. You could have done, you this done that anyway. Like, and made parks and stuff. Like there were like, there was like one park, but anyway, that's a whole other guy. I can't. Yeah. So like, cause I want to Historically black because neighborhoods it's... need to come back. Right. We right. need to stop gentrifying historically not, black and happen. Hispanic and native ways. That's not going to happen. Like, because the system just needs to be destroyed. Like the problem yeah. is, is, that we keep trying to reform the system and it yeah. there's no reformation for it there's it just we need a new system right like it just needs a new system and like what you're discussing like if legislation looks something like what you're discussing like land if land back and i'm gonna land my plane because my kids are being super patient <laughs> <laughs> they're like nine and five and like yeah how long are you gonna do this for um yeah so if land back looked legislatively like that like all federal land gets turned over for maintenance care etc yep. to the nations of that land i'm here to push it i'm not a protester because i don't like to be outside and people talk crazy to you and i it <laughs> yeah. but i would vote for it uh you know i would absolutely push the legislation i'll talk about it this and other thing um, you know, if there's a way to come together as, you know, descendants of slavery, along with First Nations, where it says, you know, like, and that land that is owed to those descendants of slavery is also part of that reparations package. I think that that would be that much bigger and better. Oh, absolutely. I'm loving this conversation, too. I think it would be because like power and numbers, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Right? Because like, it's scary. Like, I'm not gonna, like, I'm not, I don't cape for white people or the system because fuck the system. But I can understand that energy behind it because it's terrifying because, you know, oppressed people oppress people. So the idea yep. that you get in your head, because even me, I'm like, I'm not giving you my land. Like, it's not happening. Come, right. come and get it. Like, I have that attitude. So I can imagine, you know what I'm saying? Like, white America who's been emboldened with their yeah. whiteness for 400 years and having all of their rights since the inception of America, since the colonization of Turtle Island, right? And and the inception of America, being emboldened with 400 years, uh, come and get it. Come yeah. and get it. So that like, I understand their energy too. So I think like clarifying conversations like this make it make sense, right? Like they're like similar to what you were saying about the reparations given to the First Nations that happened somewhere in Florida with a black family. Um, damn, I wish I had it on my on my head. But a black family, let's just for shits and giggles, like there was a strip on a beach that they owned, and it was given in reparations and then taken back, which is what happened with a lot of black families that did actually receive reparations. The Confederate armies came back and like <laughs> yep. my land and took the shit back. So, but the county area, what have you in Florida happened to be like, yo, this is this family's land. And yeah. they paid them all this money. And the black people weren't like, all right, get off of it. It was just like, okay, you, pay us now right exactly so like there could be like its own it's shifting the is that your family the one from florida please say that that's your family because that is so damn dope um but um like there could be this shifting of energy right like yeah. and, like when you start doing what's right right like so like i said like i live on what used to be a plantation turn that energy back around and like hey this land belongs to black people black people are not going to say get out well this white canadian is like that's burn. yeah i'm totally down for burning it down i'm a burn it down person but i think we could burn it down <laughs> in a way that doesn't need to be an entire other civil war. This is also burning it down, right? Giving native people back their indigenous lands federally, right? And then turning over, doing reparations to descendants of slavery. And then like, hey, yeah, we got our land back. We're happy to pay the Cree nation, the Creek nation, the Navajo nation or whatever. Oh, oh. <laughs> 
Oh, hey, I and um, so, you know, and then us paying the taxes to them. I'm good on that. Like, yeah. High five. I'm in. That's solidarity, right? And then, like, with white people who own homes, because they need to feel protected, too, because nobody wants to be houseless. No one. And no right. one should be Yeah, houseless. we're not talking about creating right. more unhoused people. But I we think don't that's want what that. Those, our conversations, because, like I said, like, my own yeah. fear was, like, I'm not turning over my deed. Come and get it. Like, so nobody yeah. should be houseless. And then we're not exposed to Native cultures. So we don't know what the plans are. Right. Like when you hear that um, people are not exposed to, you know, black American culture, except through the shitty media. Right. So like they're like, nah, as soon as black people get some land, they're kicking us all out. Like people judge them, other people by their own hearts and actions. Yeah. And so like when you've had white people be the colonizers and they're like, well, like this is their power. Like they had to hold on to that. Right. It, it, it's, mm -hmm. it's scarcity energy. Like I can't let this go because now we're going to be the oppressed. We will be the underdogs. We are going to wind up houseless, you know, can't find homes to live in, pushed out, gentrified because people are afraid of the shit that they've done to other people coming back. Right. So I think that having more clarifying conversations and getting like legislation, I agree. I agree to take care of the land so we don't die. Having legislation that makes it make sense to everybody, right? Like, yeah. no, like white people, if you own a house, you're not about to live, you're not about to get kicked off to no. the land. What's going to happen is, is you're going to pay your taxes to that first nation. Now, if that land happens to have been a plantation or it should have been given in reparations to black people, that is another space that needs to be, have been a plantation or it should have been given in reparations to black people. That is another space that needs to be, yeah. I'm sure need to pay black, a black family that came from that land. Like I could trace my um, ancestors to LaGrange, Georgia, like not too far down the road from where I'm at right now. And their home is still operating. That plantation is still operating. They still, you know, make money off of it. Like give me, with my inheritance. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, exactly. That's my inheritance. Like, especially like, because they actually, they actually all get together. It's a very wild, if anybody wants to look it up, they're called the Black Rutledges. And when I found this out, I'm like, they actually get together. Like the family of the enslaved gets together with the enslavers and have family dinner. And I'm like, y'all don't want me there for Thanksgiving because I want to check. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You owe me some money. Um, so anyhow, um, I thank you for this clarifying conversation. And I really want to have some more because while it kind of went off into this area, I'm definitely right. more clear on land back. I still don't feel like we really touched on the anti-blackness within the community. And I know that that's not going to yeah. be solved between you and I. Like these things are solution based. Land back is like, OK, there's legislation you know, anti-blackness is about a shift in energy, a shift in feeling. Yeah. Because obviously, you know, having this conversation with you, someone can be black American and also first nations. So the gatekeeping yeah. out for, of black people out of native spaces is really gross and disgusting. And I don't want that to be dismissed in this conversation because it went into a feel good place about land back. Um, that's right. something that's important to me, but I do have to get to the children and I would love to have more conversations on yeah, anytime. unpacking the anti-blackness within that space and what that looks like. Right. And like bringing all of these communities together, cause it's going to take solidarity. Like I can actually connect you too, with some really good Afro indigenous people creators I would on that. this platform I would, that talk about that, that consistently. I would love that. Like I said, I have no dog in the shop. I'm not, I'm not native. Right. But as a black person, it's like, it's hurtful for me. Right. Because like I have, I'm very comfortable in my Irish identity. And like, so I didn't have like these, the, these identity crises that biracial children, like similar to yourself, right. You're like, no, like I'm, I'm from Ghana. Like, I'm, like, like yeah. there's not like this identity crisis within you culturally and so like I have an yeah. attachment to a culture right like to I still can't say the word the indigenous of 
Ireland and like those roots yeah. feel very comfortable to me. And so when I see black people who are my people being pushed out of culture that would ground them in some identity of self because blackness as i as i say it it's black. generational trauma passed down and uh deflected onto other people i'm hurting i don't have identity things have been stolen from my people so now i'm going to deflect that hurt onto these other right. people because you know I'm hurt. My family was hurt. My tribe was hurt. So now I'm going to deflect that rage onto other people who came here too, who aren't from here. But it's like, no, black people didn't come here on a vacation. Right. They didn't come here to just, you know, have a new start. They were forced to come here. So you're deflecting colonization and the trauma from that onto a group of people that didn't do that. Right. And it right. makes it's no weird, sense. like arguing with like like I'm like, I don't why I'm speaking and I'm still alive. Hold on a second, one moment. <laughs> yes. I'll let you wrap this up. Yeah, but this Here, is a like very right. unpacked conversation. Right. Absolutely. Like why are we deflecting that rage? of colonization onto other people that were colonized. Right. You like, were, we're colonized. The people British people stolen. came in and took your land and your people. They did both. Ghana, it was a British empire for years. Right. That's why there's so many mixed people in Ghana. Like Britain came over, took their land and their people. Right. And took everything from their people. You know, I'm lucky that I still have my language and my cultural ways. Beautiful. Like black people here, that was everything. That's why they were able to be enslaved. That's why you couldn't enslave the native, right? Because you because couldn't they were on their land. You couldn't enslave people. with because you're you had to take people from another land, language, spiritual, you have community, to bring spiritual. To them. You had to break them and take them somewhere else Absolutely. in a whole different environment, whole different farming system language everything you had to do that so why are we deflecting our generational trauma onto other people that literally had the same thing done to them but even worse even worse and I don't even because bring everything even worse was taken it because like yeah for like loving healing conversations like i said like, yeah and not that like i mean like obviously there's scales of worse but Right. Like just for healing conversations, I just try to stay away from like oppression Olympics. Right. Because. Like, right. But that's what I'm saying. Like we both were, we both, both groups of people literally had cultural and mass genocide committed against them. Correct. And had their land stolen. Like we went through the very similar things. So why are we native, some native people deflecting that hurt and that generational trauma onto another group of people that had the same thing happen instead of right. destroying right, white supremacy. That's what we need to That's focus on. That's my point. On. Like, I'm like, you're, while you're yeah. sitting there being anti-Black, your ass needs to be anti-white -su supremacy. Because yeah, like, the way because all you're going... doing is upholding white supremacy. That's all you're doing. You're upholding the system that has destroyed your community. And that's why, that, why are you doing that? That was my point. I was like, you know, like, and you don't see it on any, you don't see that on white homesteaders, right? They're like, oh, right. you know, I'm like, you are, it, surely it's not you, oh, First Nations wise one praising the white yeah. man. Like, like you're like, oh, yeah. you're taking such good care of the land, but then on this black woman's, it was just really harmful. But I'm going to end yeah. it here because I'm super glad, one, that I got clarity on land back. And like I said, if in fact there comes some legislation and it looks like that, like land back is some federal, you know, like give all that federal land back, you know what I'm saying? I think there's space for some solidarity between First Nations and descendants of slavery to be like, yo, let's make a joint package of like reparations yep. along with, right? Because that's what it is. Like they keep us so divided and infighting over this stupid shit like we're not focused on the bigger issue of dismantling the entire system that has colonized us all like mind body and exactly soul. so um yeah i'd be down for that thank you for the clarity on the land back 
definitely want to have another conversation in regard to like unpacking anti-blackness in First Nations spaces. And if you could connect me with more Afro-Indigenous people, yeah. I'd be super thankful. And then I wanted to ask you, um, is this okay if I share this like on a different platform, like this yeah. space? Okay. Of course. You've been awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. I appreciate it.